This is why narcissists create enemies. Narcissists are always looking to create enemies by being actively opposed and hostile to people. They're always looking to weaken or harm you in some shape or form to cause you severe physical and mental suffering as though it's their only purpose in life as though it's their only reason for existing which is why the only thing they really know how to do is to assess the risks, possibilities or effects of a situation or a course of action to make a judgement, forecast, projection, prediction or expectation and they're very good at it because they've had years of practice at manipulating their targets so they know how to assess a situation and weigh up the potential benefits of a hunt and analyzing the potential costs or risks at the same time it's like an animal they operate from their reptilian brain so they know how to coordinate an attack and they anticipate a response from their prey predator animals in the wild have been found to frequently form coordinated hunting groups where they attack in line formation they engage in collective behavior especially under conditions of considerable informational constraints and narcissists are no different they run schemes they operate from large-scale systematic plans or arrangements for attaining a particular object or putting a particular idea into effect they make plans in a devious way with the intent to do something illegal or wrong a system a program of action a hand to hand plot because they have to be the one who is successful and dominant the winner of a competition the one who achieves a position of authority where they can be in charge and give orders and make decisions because what they're really seeking is unlimited access to power and control but they're not really as dangerous or as frightening as they may seem they're not really all knowing and aware of everything they don't possess unlimited knowledge, awareness or understanding even though some victims may see it that way because the reality is that the root basis of their disorder is the opposite of everything that they portray themselves to be it stems from insecurity which is overcompensated by selfishness, arrogance and entitlement when really they're actually very weak and vulnerable they're easily damaged and destroyed and they're actually very unaware, foolish and ignorant they take cues from their target which is something that serves as a signal for them to begin their performance so they actually have no power of their own they're just using a fake fictitious character it's all make-believe it's delusion they're not really who they say they are they have nothing to fight for they have a false sense of pride from their belief in a separate self a false character which they use to fool you and that is what they're defending because it is essential to their emotional survival and it works for them because they compartmentalize their situations and interactions they divide them into sections or categories they separate them into parts and they do not allow those parts to mix together they separate them into isolated compartments to where they live in multiple separate and very different lives where they may appear to be a different character in each and one character may be the exact opposite to the other because they will continue with whatever is working for them So if one character has failed to secure the outcome or result that they would like 
they will drop that character and then they will rebuild another character somewhere else and they can switch characters whenever they choose to and at their own will so you know that they are engaged in unfair and invalid pieces of play involving interference with and illegally hindering their opponents where they're continuously getting involved in influencing situations that should not involve them because they're despicable and contentable they're dishonest and unfair they're unsportsmanlike they have no real pride, dignity or self-respect so anything is fair game to them they consider you a reasonable target to be chased, criticised and attacked they consider it acceptable to play jokes on you and to manipulate, exploit and cheat a system or a situation slyly and dishonestly for their personal gain and they won't hold accountability for anything because they can switch characters whenever they choose to they can take up a very different way of life somewhere else and when they do that they may forget things that they've done or experienced in the past which acts as a coping mechanism to a lot of the failures that they've had because they can just build a new character and personality with a different situation and experience which is unattached to the one that they had before because it's just whatever people are reflecting back to them and the new people they're dealing with are only seeing this new character that they've created and this new character is being accepted it's not being judged which is all they really care about because they just want to be praised and recognized as being good and important but when they're targeting new victims they're looking for weaknesses they're looking for disadvantages or faults they're looking for something that people are unable to resist or something that they like excessively when a normal person is not arranging or preparing things in that way they're not seeking to find people's weaknesses they're not looking for what people don't do well but this is how narcissists are wired to think which is why they can only ever be your enemy they can only be your adversary and opponent this person who is engaged in conflict and competition with you so they will never see you for who you really are they will only see you for what they can exploit and take advantage of which is why they despise power and strength they hate anything that is able to withstand great force or pressure anyone who is mentally strong and has the power to resist attack which is why they hate seeing you giving orders making decisions or enforcing obedience because that puts you in a position of power which is a direct threat to them so they have to criminalize and discredit you they have to make your activities immoral or illegal they have to harm your good reputation and cause you to lose your dignity and respect while also discrediting any opposing force that is in a position of authority whether it be doctors, lawyers, police officers, judges, psychologists or psychiatrists they have to discredit them or befriend them and turn them against you because otherwise those people would call them out they would draw attention to their unacceptable actions and behaviour and if this was effective and commonplace in society then narcissism would not exist in the world today because there would be nothing that narcissists could do about it which is not what they want they do not want the shoe to be on the other foot they do not want to be in that position which is why they maintain right to the edge of what society deems to be acceptable of what they know they can get away with and they manage to befriend and network with authority figures and public officials so that they can protect their image of reputation and it's really the only reason why most of them aren't in prison because if you look at their behaviours 
they're really no different to what you might find in a jail cell. They're disordered people. They're out of control. They're borderline crazy. And it's because they're very weak, fragile and insecure within. But they act like a bully. They habitually seek to harm, intimidate and coerce those who they perceive as vulnerable. And they act unbothered and unmoved. They show a lack of concern and interest. As though they don't feel any agitation, worry or annoyance. When in actuality when they experience a narcissistic injury, it makes them very upset. Because they're very envious of you. They have this deep-rooted resentment. Aroused by your possessions, qualities and abilities. To where they can never have a break or take a rest. Because they're constantly looking at you. And wondering how they can be successful, determined and intelligent. Instead of being weak, speaking nonsense and lying. Which is why they typically believe that other people are the same as them. They can't understand that you could be a genuine person and you're still able to be successful without having to indulge excessively in sensual pleasures such as bad sexual behaviour, drinking too much alcohol or taking drugs or dishonest or fraudulent conduct or manipulation, alteration and falsification that they engage in they can't understand it they can't see how that is even possible because they study your faults or weaknesses only to attack you and break you down by invalidating you by trying to disprove your argument, statement or theory and depriving you of legal efficacy to discredit you and to make something not true or unacceptable which are all just tactics to minimize you to reduce you to something unwanted and unpleasant to represent you as less than your true value and importance to belittle and play down who you actually are so that they can gain control and it starts off delicate and precise where they use indirect methods so that it's difficult to analyze or describe and at times they may even play it out like it's just an amusing story or trick and so it's intended to be funny so that it doesn't make you want to run away where they've always got to have a psychological advantage over you they've always got to do something better or more extreme they've got to get the better of you They've got to score a lead over you. They've got to succeed in being a point move or step ahead of you. And at times they may even be lying. Just so they can downplay the struggles and obstacles that you went through. To where you still managed to succeed. Because they want to break your pride. Your consciousness of your own dignity. To where you're proud of a particular quality or skill. even though it may just be something that you achieve from having to deal with them but yet they want to take that from you as well they want to strip you of anything that you're proud of anything that you acknowledge and recognize about yourself by acting like it isn't a big deal and refusing to acknowledge your value even though you may have done it all on your own and you never received any assistance from anyone they will still find a way to downplay it as though anyone could go through what you went through when they're just attacking your pride to minimize your value they're trying to tell you you're not who you think you are and what makes it so effective is by them doing it indirectly because then you haven't even got the option to oppose the decision or theory as mistaken or wrong so they're just completely shutting you down they don't even want you to speak 
which is why at times they will even ignore you. They will refuse to take notice of you. They will disregard you intentionally. They will treat you as a low priority, as though other people are more important. And they will pay close attention to them and attend to their comfort and wishes. They will be very polite and respectful. But only because they want you to feel unimportant, insignificant and irrelevant. They want you to feel worthless, to change your position, direction and tendency to who you know you are. And to what you know you've done. Because that is how they succeed in controlling you by breaking you down and yet still managing to keep you around them by constantly questioning the way you operate to make you doubt your own abilities because if you fall for it and you still manage to maintain and go through it and you're still dealing with them they know they've got you which is what they want because a lot of times they target you only to hurt you to conquer you and break you down and then leave you. That's the only reason why they're even there. And they will often use these tactics to confuse and make their next victim uncomfortable. To make it seem like you're not that impressive, attractive or desirable. Because they're envious of you. So that's all they're going after you for. To strip you down of your worth, value, pride and dignity. So that they can feel like they're this top dog who conquered you. They're more special, important, superior, desirable. Because now they've brought you down. They've brought you beneath them. And as long as you're around them. That's all they're going to do because of their envy of you. It causes them unrest where they must act. They must do something to take you down a notch because otherwise they can't feel comfortable. It's like in London, which has been called the asset attack hotspot of the Western world. They engage in these premeditated attacks of throwing corrosive acid on the victim's face and body with the intent to disfigure, torture or even kill the victim. To where it may cause lifelong scarring, physical disfigurement and in some cases permanent disability including blindness and immobility. And it's all because they're envious and jealous. They can't keep their emotions in check. Their feelings take over them aroused by your possessions, qualities or luck. So now they're out to get you, but they disguise it as love or a relationship. Well, that's just so they can gain access to you. So they can have a better shot at taking you down. Thank you for watching. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up. Share your thoughts in the comment section. Hit the subscribe button to receive the notifications. If you would like to support the channel, you can donate at payable.me slash Narc Survivor. You can book a one-on-one -on -one with me on my website. It's Narc Survivor the Call UK. Thank you for watching and I'll talk to you soon.